Hi right, guys, today is day three of the workshop, uh, the last day, and my name is Harpal. I've been the, your instructor for the last uh, two days, and uh, I'm excited to finish this session today. This, uh, like I said, was a dream project of mine, and you know the five of you, Teja, Trisha, Swasti, and Akshara, actually showed up for the session, which in itself is a big thing because this is hard stuff. And the three other three who haven't come on the call, uh, I can understand why they've not come as well. It is uh, this is. Uh, Today was like, you know, putting the business model canvas to the test. So if you got something great, if, if you don't have anything, that's okay. Listen to the others. But uh, as I was just talking to Trisha about this, uh, I had a session with Ajay before this call, where I said the uh, particular idea that you have is not as important, okay? The model or the business strategy, the technique you are thinking about could be different. What's most important is, did we understand all the nine columns of information about the customer persona, or the relationship, or the unique value proposition? If we understood those nine concepts in decent enough detail that if we walk into a salon or we walk into a restaurant and we, are, we observe for about 10 minutes a business, in our minds, can we get a fairly good understanding about how this business is making money or why is this business not making money, right? You should be able to gauge that. That is the, if there's one thing to learn from here, it's that, that uh, the gravitas of a person to observe, thank you, observe uh, the details and to be able to, um, you know, make either a recommendation or know at least what's going wrong, okay? So with that said, um, uh, I will let uh, any of you share your screen. Let me see if the security allows for that, allow participants to share screen. Yeah, it does allow for that. So you can share your screen, whoever wants to go first and um, tell us uh, what you have in mind. And even if again, you've not thought it through all the way, you could be editing the document as well as we are talking, right? You could bring it up saying, hey, this is what I was thinking and we can all help you with our own collective intellect. You're saying, uh, you know, if what you could do different, but the goal is just keep it fairly informal. That said, um, who would like to go first? I can. You want to go, Akshara? Awesome. But yeah. Um, I made a slideshow. I'll just share that. Okay, wait. Um, could you say that again? I'm, I'm just presenting the slideshow. Yeah, I don't. Uh, so did you get the screen? Oh, hold on, let me check. Did I? Got it. Um, can you see? Wait one second. I didn't share it. Okay. okay one no second. Idea. I see it now. Okay. So, um, this is my idea for my uh, business I workshop, and um. I was thinking of continuing my art class from when I was 13 years old, so in eighth grade, except that time I didn't plan it out thoroughly. So it first started um, with my cousins saying I want they they wanted me to teach art for them. And then um, they started paying me and then it's so on. It's first started as a free fun class, but now I'm going to structure it. Okay. But so the yeah, I, love it all, all really. I already love everything. Just how you explain the concept. A big part of what we are trying to do here is confidence building between the students. I already love how you're speaking. So you're already my hero. Go ahead, keep going. Okay, thanks. So the overview of the idea, um, I was thinking to teach art to children seven and up. So um, I can teach art to kids my age even. And I'm going to cover mediums such as acrylic paint, color pencil, and oil pastels. And some of these um, materials are kind of costly. So I was thinking of creating an Amazon um, list where the students buy things. So I was thinking of only providing paint and canvases. And I could ask the students to bring their own materials like oil pastels and color pencils. So in that way, they could use it how much they want and I don't have to worry about maintenance costs for that. And um, if the business is successful, I know a couple of friends that I think may be interested in joining the 
um, workshop. So um, maybe they could work as employees for me. Wonderful. And um, this is the business model canvas. So um, yeah, my key partners would be art um, supply company. Well, let's start from the customer segment. Let's start from the oh. right side. We we'll talk customer okay. segments, relationships, channels, revenues, then the value proposition, or we could start with segments, uh, relationships, channels, value proposition, and then revenues. And then we go on the left side, which is partners, activity, resources, and cost. If you're okay with that. If okay, you want to go yeah. the way you want to go, that's okay. Usually we start on the right side, then define the customer, what's the relationship, how I want to reach them, the channels. Then we talk value proposition. Then we say, okay, what products do we want to sell them? The revenue stream. Then we go on the, on the left side, okay? Okay. So um, first customer relationships, right? Uh, no, customer segments. Oh, okay. segments. What's that? What is the target customer you're going after? Okay, the target customer I'm going after is mostly um, parents with um, young children or people who, or parents that don't think art should be um, taking up a lot of money and think of it as like a hobby. And I think my workshop would fall in a very good middle place because they're either really cheap art classes like in libraries that don't have set times. And they're also extremely expensive ones like Aichen Art Academy who charge like $50 per class. So I think mine, they would in, well, find it useful because it, I'm planning to charge $10 per student. And, um, Wait, what do I see next? Customer relationships and channels. Okay. And so I was thinking to do um, multi-platform. So first to build up my um, my name, I'm going to do an in-person art class, maybe at a recreational center or a garage or even an elementary school. I could rent a place and then I could... Um, also use Zoom to do video conferencing and in-person face-to-face, like, so for, to make it, um, to make it more accessible globally and like have more outreach and some channels, like I was thinking of improving my advertising because last time I only used word of mouth. So I was thinking of creating posters and putting them in busy streets, et cetera. And I was going to um, put my idea in the Fremont Recreational Activities website. And of course, social media flyers and a website would be really helpful to have like an overview of our, my idea and yeah. And Khan Academy for promotional content, because I don't want to just join um, Khan Academy and make it seem like I'm not starting my own business. Okay. So that's okay. just an idea. I'm not so sure about it yet. And about the revenue the streams is. Go um, ahead. No, that's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead in the order you want to go. Oh, wait, what? You have value propositions and revenue streams. Oh. Go ahead. Explain. Okay. The value proposition. So I think it's important that um, the kids enjoy and appreciate the importance of art. And I was going to do this by relating to their style and needs because I'll probably be of around their age. And I think they would enjoy my class better than some um, teacher that's like 20 or 30 years older than them and doesn't relate to it. And mostly like, instructional but i'm going to be like a buddy to them and be a friend and also um i'm going to have consistent teachers going back again to the library um a lot of their classes don't have consistent teachers and the teachers always change so with a consistent teacher we can um help increase the student and teacher relationship Positivity, I guess. So yeah. I'm going to stop you here to ask the students, um, other students, where do you, does anybody think that the customer segment could be fine-tuned a little bit? Um, 
what what are the what feedback from anybody guys on the five uh, columns that Akshara has presented? She's done a wonderful job of explaining it. But what what's the thinking? Anybody have a perspective? Yeah, that's fine. Honey. You can stay in full screen. We can, we can, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you're doing you're doing good. Okay, keep it the way it is. Any thoughts from anybody before I jump in with my smart ass comments? Um. This is just um, a shot in the dark, but I'm thinking for the customer profiles, you also might want to focus on the kids themselves because you talk about how parents are seeking affordable art centers. Um, and you do say kids who like art, but maybe do you have like an age group in mind that like you like interacting with the most or things like that, that you might want to put over there that I guess could make things easier to market because you know who your audience is. I love it. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the saying that, you know, I'm targeting students say, uh, nine years to 12 years in age or 12 to 13, whatever it is, right? Uh, secondly, uh, summer school programs, so, you know, parents, more than that, you're looking at uh, parents looking for affordable summer school programs. The third one, in my opinion, could be um, uh, 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 engineering uh, uh, minded students who want to learn creativity or something, right? You're trying to expand the audience, not to just art, but you're saying, uh, you know, engineer STEM oriented students who want to better their profile with uh, you know more comp holistic thinking you know whatever some crap to you know to find you but Swasti go ahead I didn't mean to take over from you but uh, I love what you said there no one really that's, that's all I had to say okay anybody else about uh, customer relationships or segments or channels or value proposition Let me add something on the channels. I think one of the channels you should be putting is YouTube channels, but uh, where uh, you want to have a few do it yourself type of videos, like, you know, sh just spreading the brand, starting with saying, what is it? What does art mean, right? Just some, you know, you're not giving away the entire class over there, but YouTube is a fantastic way for people to learn some basics about what you're gonna be teaching. Uh, try to build a fan following over there. Uh, have a blog which talks about how you have matured over time because of uh, how art has talked to you. So kind of becomes an inspiration for the other students also to saying how Akshara has changed as a person because of what she has learned in art. Um, try to get some testimonials from some of your friends, some others who you did teach last year, some of your cousins, some people just writing a little bit, you know, two, three lines on your blog and focus, push it all on your website. So, you know, like, like if you go to sales coach website, you always see a few reviews, you know, that's one of the things I push right after bat saying, here's what people said about me. Um, because more people, people believe in people more than, you know, people believe in the buyer person who's selling. So, but this is good. I like how you're thinking. Uh, your customer relationships is really, um, your relationships are really one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you've written in person. Okay, so let me face to face through emails or messages. Um, what else is it, uh, relationship? You're almost, um, it's more like a mentor relationship where you're also coaching some of these students to think creatively. Um, um, I don't know, I think you're fine. You're okay, relationships are doing good, but mentoring and coaching is sounds in general plays well. Uh, the good thing is actually when you put start putting all this together, uh, you know, when you've written your campus, your canvas very well, uh, who can tell me what's the, once you've written the entire canvas, give me two examples of guys, uh, how this canvas helps you with your business. Like what channel, like a website or something, can you replicate all this content very quickly? Like once you've tried and tested the, value proposition, the segments, relationships. Don't you guys think when you're maybe doing a presentation to prospective uh, customers, you can literally bring up this, this entire thing in front of them and say, this is how the business is gonna operate. This is what I do. This is how I build my relationship with all of you. This is how I got market to others like you. Uh, this is the segments I'm targeting. And this is where you fit in over here. So I'm just throwing something like, even if you do a YouTube video or you make your website, 
you now know how to target your content because you've literally written everything on this paper, had a few mentors look at it for you. Okay, your value proposition though is a little uh, long. I feel like value proposition should be bullets, shorter bullets in general. Um, talking about enjoyment is good. Um, the uh, confident teachers is also good. I feel I like everything what's written. It just feels a little verbose. So yeah. revenue streams, uh, student tuitions, uh, positive reviews, uh, advertisements. You also mentioned something about giving links to people to buy their content from uh, Amazon. That yeah. can be used as affiliate marketing, but that becomes a revenue stream. Even if it's not a lot of money, but when people click on that link from your website, uh, that, that can be an affiliate marketing where you can put a link on your website saying buy these uh, equip these things. And when they, when they buy for 20, 20 bucks, Amazon sends you 50 cents out of that. So that's affiliate marketing. Even though you're not selling it as affiliate marketing, but if they click on that link from your pay, page and they buy something, you will get paid for it. So small amount, but hey, everything, every dollar counts in life. Okay, this is good. Okay, talk about your activities, resources, and key partners, and let's uh, cost structure them. Okay. Okay. Um, like I said before, I'm going to teach color pencil, acrylic painting. Could you and make screen better? Could you go to slideshow? Could you go oh, to slideshow? Yeah. We can see it better. Yeah, I'm going to teach um kids seven and up or no seven to fifteen. That's okay. It's all right. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Um. And um, I was going to teach color pencil and acrylic painting and oil pastels. So um, those are the basic activities we're going to do, but we'll do different projects with Let them. Let me interrupt you there. So key activities is incorrect. Because key activities is what you will actually do with them. Like, you know, a workshop, a startup, or it's a one-on-one, -on -one, it's, uh, it's a write-up. Those are the activities which you'll be doing. So like, for example, in my success coach business, this workshop is one of the key activities I do. Another activity I do is work with you guys on the yearly academic plan. Uh, third I do is the summer activities planning. Fourth I do is essay writing. Those are the activities I do. So I think you've mixed up activities with uh, more like your da -da -da relationships. Um, you're basically mixing up the two, but that's fine. It's a good start, but uh, key activities are what you're gonna do. What are the activities that will happen, okay? So it'll be like specific projects? Specific projects, specific workshops that you will do. Maybe you give one-on-one -on -one to, to coaching to them, like you know, a Zoom session, you go over some things. Maybe you'll meet somebody in person. Maybe there's a blog where you'll give some details, some YouTube videos you're gonna have them review. All those are activities. Activities basically are verbs, which is, these are the actual things you'll be doing in this business for the, which will help build your customer relationships through the channels you provide. Okay. Okay. So you can fix it later, but it's good. Okay. Let's okay. keep going. Key resources and key partners. Let's talk about those two. Key resources um, would be obviously art expertise um, and also other artists willing to teach kids for a set price. So it'll be easier to have multiple sessions and a website informing about the art class. So um, you, you don't have to constantly talk to me about like the details and yeah. Love it. I like how you're thinking in terms of a marketplace. You're not just saying it's actually I'm gonna do it. You're actually thinking of a marketplace which is how entrepreneurs scale up their business. So good. Okay. Um, some of my key partners would be art supply companies, recreational services, if I rent or do something around that area, um, Zoom or other video conferencing platforms for the online classes, PayPal or Zelle to um, transfer the payment, and Dollar Tree because I think like some of the canvases are really cheap and good quality there. So yeah, and Amazon for the affiliate marketing type of thing. Love it, honey. Love it. Very well explained. Let's go into your cost structures. Okay. Um, salaries for um, art class employees, if it branches out to be bigger, of course. And um, cost for paint and canvases. 
and that's fixed depending on the amount of students. And maintenance is for brushes, that'll that's a variable cost because it depends on how much the brushes are used and rent is also fixed. Actually, this is so complete. You really made me proud, Bachit. This is very, very well explained. I would like for you to improvise your, like I think this is the first time you're presenting it, to be able to present this entire thing in about under three minutes with a crisp thought process. You know, let me take a quick stab at it. You know, I'm Akshara. I'm starting a business in the, you know, paints, um, paint, painting, you know, I'm not using the right terms over here, that typically the people I'm targeting are students uh, between nine and 12 and parents who are looking for summer classes for them. And I'm also targeting uh, students who would want to Im improve their STEM skills, become more comprehensive. So they can actually bring, bring in some zeal into their things, which can be good for their college applications. The way I'm gonna get to each of you is through one-on-one -on -one relationships, one -on -one, or you can get through two messages to me. The way I will be finding a lot of my, my customers is through posters, word of mouth, through my website, and through YouTube. The key value proposition I bring to the table is I'm gonna make this process enjoyable because I've gone through it myself. I'm gonna bring in teachers who've done this before, consistent relationships building over time. We want you to not only become good at uh, art, but to get better at the larger holistic perspective. This is gonna be a global program. You can do it, I bet you want. We can have recorded sessions. We can do asynchronous discussions. So if you're very busy, you don't have to come to me all the time. Um, the resources we're gonna use is Zoom, a website, my PayPal. Um, the partners I'm working or relying on are the uh, the art supply companies, the place where we'll be doing the work. And the key activities we do here really is one-on-one -on -one discussions with you, group meetings, our blog, our YouTube channel where based activities. And the cost structures are fairly marginal around sal salaries and the rent for the place we maintain and maintenance of the brushes. Okay. Um, obviously, I did a terrible job of explaining your business in you know my non-artistic uh, non thinking, but when you, when you talk like that, or at a very consistent level, you are now getting a point across to anybody who's going to invest in your business. Okay? Yeah, I thought we were supposed to explain in detail, so. You were, you were, and I, I get it. And that's, yeah. you, did, you did the right thing. I'm just saying over time, you should be able to, your business, you should be able to explain in less than three minutes exactly everything it will do that somebody is ready to invest money either by becoming a customer or by becoming an investor in your business to, to lend you money to expand the business, okay? That's how entrepreneurs have one thing going for them. They are good at selling their passion or what they're gonna give. The bad part of entrepreneurs is they blabber. They just go off all over the map. If you talk who I'm targeting, how I'll get to them, what's unique about my business, here are the things you will get from me. And this is the revenue stream. So this is the products you'll be buying. People get it very, very quickly. And then they buy from you. Okay. All right. That's it. You're done with your session. Okay. Who wants to go next? Good job, honey. You did great. Uh, I don't mind going next, but I haven't structured um, it the way I was supposed to. That's all right. Whatever you yeah, have. Yeah. I So it's this idea that I've, I think. Uh, it, just at least. Um, do this thing, uh, make a copy of that or use that homework assignment, make a copy of that and at least uh, showcase, show us uh, even a blank canvas like with that post-it note on it and uh, uh -huh. just uh, talk to two, three things if you wanna just do that. That way at least it will structure your thinking. You don't have to have post-it notes all the way. Just oh, I do have slides though. And I can, I, I can probably improv most of this I, because I know this idea pretty well. So, go for it, honey. Just go for it. Just show okay. us that slide. Great. Okay. Let me see where I can find that empty template. Um, it's if you go in the classroom uh, under the, uh, I think the slide section. Uh, I forgot where I put it. Um, let me let me quickly look it up. And, okay. Uh, let me also look. Um, it's I think in the very first uh, slides and whatever in that. Uh, slide. Slides and recordings. Okay. I think it's under that itself. If I've forgotten, I don't know. I think it should say homework or something. Oh yes, yeah, it's homework assignment. Okay, let me see. So why don't you go, Bacha? Why don't you go next after this one? Let's have uh, so just I'll give you a few minutes to just you know put it down, or even if you want to put a blank template, that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't we start with Tejas? Okay, and then we come okay, to right after that. Okay, okay. Tejas, you want to go next? I know you have your template ready to go. Oh uh, yeah, I can go. Let me just share my screen. Okay, go ahead. 
but I love it, Swasti. The fact that you are ready to, you know, go into it now, that completes me as a teacher. That you know, okay, the students are feeling confident that they can present. Okay, so this is my like business canvas. So my idea was to make like websites for like small businesses that don't have like a large budget. So I would like do it for, like for cheaper than you would find like a professional like website maker to do it. So my customer segments. I would target like small businesses or generally anyone who wants like a quality website, but they don't have like the budget or resources or time to like hire like a, somebody to make a professional one for them, or they don't have like the time to do it themselves. So the customer, so the customer relationship, I will like provide provide quality customer service and be adaptable to like to the client's needs, like and like what they want on their website. I would also give consistent progress updates, like to, uh, bit, like so the client knows how far like I would be, how far I'm along, and what else needs to be done, and like if they need a, to do anything to help me. And the channels I would advertise through, I would have a website, obviously. I would also have like social media, and like I would try to like advertise to through word of mouth and ask people to like recommend me and stuff. So uh, the revenue streams, so I would get like an initial fee from like creating the actual website. Then I would also charge like a small fee to like maintain or update the website if like the client needs it to be changed or anything. So that's how I would make like the money. And my value proper propositions are, I would like I would provide quality websites that are also cheap, so like anybody can like hire me and stuff. And, and like able. Uh, morning, Ani, uh, Tejas, this is fantastic. I would like for everybody to critique or give some suggestions to these four uh, or these uh, six. Uh, I like how crisply you explained it. Um, the six. Uh, does the group have any feedback for Tejas on just the value prop, the customer is going after, the relationships, channels? I feel like the customer segment he's going after is um, it's kind of thrifty. Um, chances, like in general, when you go to a business and you tell them, I can make you a website, either people don't have a website at all because they didn't really care about it or they have something already. It's very rare to find some business which is, oh, I'm glad you came. I don't have a website and you know, here's a thousand bucks for my website. Okay, um, doesn't happen usually. So. What I would suggest, uh, Tejas, for you is um, the, um, the service you are trying to offer is you're not, um, you have to be salesy in this process, okay? Which is okay. the number one problem people have in the world is they don't like business. What do, what are, as a business owner, what do you want to pay for? Let me ask you this simple question, anybody, right? Don't you want to just pay for getting new customers? Like, okay, if I can tell you, hey, well, I'll do something for you, which will get you customers and you pay me when you get customers. I'm ready to, you know, work with you for that. Like a website doesn't guarantee you a customer. In fact, most of the time a website doesn't get you jack. It's just, a, you know, like a, it's a status thing, which is just there. Oh, if you come to my website, but if you go to a salon owner or you go to a grocery store and you tell them I'll make your website, usually um, it's a, uh, that value prop is not good enough. But if you tell them, I can make you, I can advertise for you on Facebook. I can create your Facebook page, which can get you others to look at your site. If you have some promotional content, I can put it for you. I can make you an Instagram page or TikTok videos for your business, which will get to a lot of people and uh, stuff. And I can put it up fairly quickly for you. Usually people are ready to pay you for that because they don't know how to get to that market. They don't know how to get okay. on Facebook. They don't know how to get on TikTok or Instagram or whatever it is. Becoming a digital agency, which allows for, which also creates, by the way, websites and posters and uh, um, um, stuff like that. That is the byproduct. It's like we, Tejas is all about, he understands a particular, so uh, for example, when you say small businesses, that's a very large segment. If you say, I want to go after chiropractors and maybe schools or maybe small businesses like Akshara's business, right? Where you're trying to do recreational business or it's educational, 
you already have a domain expertise. Maybe you say that saying, I'm going up to small businesses who do this and this and this. This is uh, the service they need because they don't know how to go on Facebook. They don't know how to create this. I have learned this through a Udemy course myself. And I will, uh, you know, I'm providing what call a digital agency. I can let, I can help you um, buy ad space on Google. I, if your budget is say, 50 bucks a day, I can help you put a say, Facebook campaign, a TikTok campaign. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I can build a website too for you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that gets people excited because they're like, oh my God, I don't have anything on Facebook. I can show it to other people. I might get some business over here. And if they start getting business, you can track that business and you can say, okay, I got you 10 leads. Each lead going to cost you 10 bucks. So I need hundred bucks from you every month. Stuff like that. It's yeah. like advertise like all over social media as you said. Yeah, I'm saying become an expert of two, three social media platforms for a customer and uh, for a set of customers where you say, I'm the boss of Facebook. I know how to make a next door page and I've done it for so many people and it, it, it can, you know, leverage other platforms that are already there. You could also say, I can create your website and you could say, I'll create it using um, WordPress. So become good at WordPress, which is like the world's most dominant platform when people want to create like an e-commerce website or something. It's an open source product. Uh, you can create a WordPress site on that, uh, which is not just static. It's not just content. You can actually bring in plugins from outside into that. So I like where you're going. I would sharpen it for a, for websites. I would make it WordPress websites. That is a people get it. That it can be incorporated. It's like, it's like a full on platform, which is not just HTML. It will let you do like you know, JavaScript, it'll let you put in e-commerce, whatever you might want, you can do in WordPress. Secondly, right. I would become a digital agency going after people saying, I can get you on Google. I can get you on Nextdoor. I can get you on TikTok. I can get you on Facebook. And this is what my cost is for this work. And that is stuff which is fairly easy to do. And you have no idea they just how many people make millions just doing that much. You sharpen your pencil, say, I will do only a few things, but I will do them goddamn well. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Uncle, for that. Yeah. Anybody else with any suggestions for him, for Tejas? Okay. All right. Then why don't you go ahead and tell us the left hand side of your, uh, of your knowing what you knew before. Don't go by what I added on top of it. If you were just doing what you were saying, go ahead, tell us the left okay. hand. So starting with the key activities, it would be like making the actual websites. And I would also like make like, like graphics and like videos and like edit like pictures that you could put on the website. And then for like resources, I would need like, like a website designer, like tools, like the WordPress and stuff. And like, I would also need editing software to like make the videos and graphics. Wonderful. The key partners would be like uh, like the companies that the, the website designer tools and also like companies that provide like like stock images like Shutterfly and stuff like that. And then the cost structure, I would have to like pay for the website designer and you would have to like pay for like a domain name so it's like easily accessible, the website link and pay for like the media, like the images and videos that you're putting on the website if you like didn't make them yourself. I love it. I love it how simple you kept it and you got the point across. Good job. Well, okay, anybody thanks, else has any feedback for Tejas? Um, it's not really feedback, but I was kind of confused. What would the maintenance fee be? Uh, so I was thinking like, like if they wanted to add more things to their website or change something and they wanted like me to do, it, then like I would charge them a fee to do that. Oh, okay. So one is a revenue. So one would be a one-time cost, which is for creation of the content. And then yeah. for maintenance, he would charge a certain fee. Maybe he could uh, have affiliate marketing over there. Maybe he would charge by the uh, um, by adding new channels. So like per channel. So if you want me to add Facebook, a new channel, Facebook will cost you say uh, 50 bucks uh, a year, or hundred bucks a year for adding the Facebook page for you. Um, for TikTok, it'll be different. Per video, I'll charge you extra. Uh, you could also say, I'll come with my camera and take pictures of your uh, of your business or when you are teaching this thing and I'll charge you per hour for that work of what I'll put together, right? The, the, okay. the, see, the, 
Oh, possibilities are infinite, literally infinite. Once you get a customer paying you 10 bucks, you got him, okay? If he sees value in you providing him business and you become a partner, like start understanding, for example, start understanding how Akshara does her business and say, hey, Akshara, I'll even come over and help you with some of these things. I'll even advertise your business on my website. Why don't you do the same thing on your website? Like, you know, put a link at the bottom of your website. It says created by Tejas and stuff. And, uh, you know, that you could do it all kinds of ways because once you get in business, you start thinking business. If you can, if you can get Akshara more customers, she'll be very happy to cut your check. But if all you're asking for is a check saying, oh, I'm going to charge you for maintenance fee. She's going to be like, dude, she's going to teach. Every time you want to behave like a partner. When I come to any of you students, okay? I don't talk to you like a counselor. I talk, I try to talk to you like a partner, a business partner. I try to talk to each of you saying, I'm vested in your career. Let me help you with some way, right? That's what you want to become. You want to talk like your customer domain expertise, what we call as talk their language, talk their aspirations. And pretty soon you'll realize customers open up their wallet to you. Yeah, thank you, Uncle, for the suggestion. Good point, Akshara, for you, for you as well. Anybody else for anything for Tejas or can we move to the third person? Oh, my, my dog thinks we need to move. <laughs> okay. All right. Why don't we move to you, Swasti, next? Okay, so I found this Notion template and that's what I'm going to be writing on. Oh, my dog started barking too. But I'll share my screen. So I actually made a presentation for this idea beforehand. I think Coach Uncle, you've already seen it before. It's that app that my, I think my dad sent this video to you, but I just wanted to restructure it. Yes, I remember um, that, yes. But that's okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're doing good. I, I think that because you already know the domain of what you were trying to build out for, and uh, you know, the productivity app, and uh, that should be good, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so this is what we have so far. Um, let me pull up. Okay, so the business model canvas is on the side and the thing that I have on the side is the original presentation and the information from here is basically going to fill in whatever's going here. So starting off with our value proposition, a couple of things that are unique to this specific app. Oh, I probably should. Okay, so Marathon is like it. an app. Um, is it all right if I go through this slideshow first because it, it concisely? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is just share that screen okay okay so here we have um okay okay so marathon is an app that gamifies productivity and so the idea of gamifying productivity is that we bring fun to being a more productive person and here's how so a couple of statistics that kind of drew us to the market um only 60 percent or less of workday hours are spent on productive work so what is our biggest obstacle here a lot of the times, like our, especially like for our market specifically, we were aiming towards like high schoolers and college students that have, they have no choice but to make the most of their time and to study like well and things like that and be on top of things. Otherwise, they, they lose a lot of value from their education. So the goal here is that we want to solve for one dimensional like productivity. What does one dimensional productivity mean? Well, if you look at a lot of the apps that are currently in the industry, like Habitica and Forest, I'm not sure if you've heard of these, but uh, Habitica is an app that gamifies like, oh, if you like do this task, then you get this many points for this character. And Forest is kind of like this Pomodoro style app that you can connect with friends. And so here are the things, here's how they fit into the industry. They kind of focus a lot more on like short-term focus, as you can see here. And what they like to do is they give you one part of a resource, one part of a productivity system, and they leave you to figure out how you want to use it. A lot of the times for students and like for even college students who are just trying to figure out what it means to be productive for them, this isn't enough, enough. You can't just give a kid who struggles with productivity and struggles with staying organized, you can just give them a timer and call it a day. That's not enough to fix like a problem they may have with their productivity system. So here's our solution. Marathon is an app that helps you work, focus not just on short-term goals, which is what other apps like also tend to have a heavy focus on, but also how those short-term goals fit into a longer term like scenario um, as you can see here, we also want to focus like our biggest feature is that we personalize the productivity experience just towards our, uh, our users. And the way we do this is through a personality test, but you'll see that later on. 
And we also want to show students that productivity isn't an everything. And the way we're doing this is streamlining articles from mental health, like websites, resources, like doctors, uh, things like that. And so we're basically not only just giving, we're giving them information from outside parties, we're giving them a personalized productivity experience, and we're giving them something that's unique to our app, which is accessing long-term goals. Okay, that's irrelevant. But uh, this is just a basic statistic, just talking about how many people, this is basically going to be our market, high school and college students that require productivity apps. And as like, I'm sure you've like noticed a couple of those like uh, apps that I mentioned before, I'm sure you recognize some of them at least. Like Forest uh, is a really big one, Pomodoro. There are lots of Pomodoro apps out there that many, like millions and millions of high school students are using. So our app just has that cherry on top. We have we have all of these resources in one place, which is just not provided by other apps. And so this will draw in this like 9.4 million and 12.2 million college students in the US alone. And we plan on expanding that. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, this is also irrelevant. This is for initially for a competition. Um, and it's been a while since we presented this, which is why it's so messy. But this is our initial initial like customer um, like pr profile basically. So we wanted to start with college and high school students. Uh, we basically want to focus on the first two like or three inner circles, but because oh, this app is mainly meant for older audiences, like providing them to elementary and middle schoolers wouldn't be beneficial because a lot of the times like like when you start getting into high school, your parents expect you to start studying on your own and doing things on your own. And a lot of the times it feels like you don't have that support. And so this app gives you a foundation uh, and that's why it's like targeted towards mostly high school and college students. Uh, we did this like survey amongst kids in our school and 93% of the people that we interviewed, including like including like teachers from our school and like high schoolers themselves agreed that long-term productivity is something that's very underlooked, but like that sh it should be like more popular in these apps because it's very beneficial. Okay, so this is, um, I guess this is like the foundation for our business model, like our business idea. And so we're looking at what we want, what's in the market right now and how we want to change to that to fit our app. And so what we're going to eliminate from the market is the lack of information and the belief that there's only one learning method that, that you could follow. A lot of the time people say like, oh, you have to find that one method that works for you. But the thing is, people are multi the people are multidimensional and the apps that help them be productive should like reflect that. As for reduce, um, so things we're going to reduce in the in industry is a lot of the time they put too much value on the short term. And this takes people like this, this limits people's success in the future and things like that. And this app also like acts as a form of life coaching because these skills that you're going you're gonna to be using them forever. And it also gives you like a good solid foundation so that even maybe you won't even need to use this app in the future, but you have these skills and you have them. They're part, they're part of you now because of this. Uh, a couple of things we're going to raise, raise is uh, accessibility to information about like mental health resources and things like that and start to harness intrinsic motivation. What makes me want to study and how, I'm, how am I going to make that present in my life? What are we going to create? What's completely new in the industry? Uh, there's a, once again that long-term productivity mindset. We're going to make productivity personalized through a personality test that caters caters like like uh, activities to you and this is done through AI as well and we're going to be condensing a lot of educational resources like I said before streamlining them from other sources to give you that information okay um okay I, I just realized a lot of this information is mostly specific to the competition but here's one that might be relevant so like we wanted the, I like how you had the inside number 12 everybody else was going down in the toilet and you're going yeah. Back. yeah, that was so. <laughs> the whole point was to exaggerate things, and this is what I did. I like it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but this is basically reflecting everything that I just said before. I kind of word vomited at you, like the features that I have, but this is it summarized. Basically, okay. our app is great, and everyone else sucks. <laughs> um, so value innovation. This also is very irrelevant. So going into the features, um, this is the important part. So there are four main things that we're giving to our uh, customers. And so like, like, it's, like it says here, we have a person personalized system for productivity. Every single person generally gets a unique experience from this app. And how do we do this? 
it's through a personality quiz. We initially start by putting people in boxes. What are what is your productivity type? And this is like some ways that you might like want to try. So for example, um, I actually have a website, um, but I'm not gonna bring it out now. But on that website, we have like a prototype quiz and it ideally types you as a productivity style. Like maybe you like prefer more spontaneous things. Like you like to, you don't like scheduled structured like methods that restrict you. Well, then you might want to try things like time blocking, but in a way that is more spontaneous. A lot of people try to schedule things and maybe you want to try going on a hour by hour basis so that you have more flexibility, but while still creating a general structure in your life. Uh, and so it kind of like tries to focus on skills that you don't have while making it seem like it's still in your comfort zone. Maybe you like having lots of structure. Maybe you plan like your days Maybe you plan your uh, like after afternoons, like days in advance, and like you have a bullet journal, all of those things. Maybe this app is saying, hey, you want to take it a little slowly. You don't want to plan that much in advance, and here's how you want to do it. Maybe try, I guess. Uh, we basically want to give them access to a lot of different, um, lots of different productivity frameworks. And based off of what you're lacking off of that personality type, we give you the resources that we think you need. But obviously, you do have access to the other things as well. It's just most mostly focused on the things that benefit you the most. Well, um, I'll ask you a question here. Yes. Because um, I also need to give it to Trisha after this. Is that is there a way you could, uh, can we take a few of these slides and say which one of the columns will they fit into? Yes. Like, okay, that's fine. Right. Where does this one fit? Oh, um, this yeah. fits. Um, let me pull up the. Yeah, you can bear, you can share. No, you can spare, you can share the screen now where you can see both the pages together. Okay, let me do that. I'll ask everybody as well. Where do you think this one fits in, guys? The features. Um, this is the value proposition. Is not... this one? I think he matter features oh. and activities. Oh, okay, I, I see. I see. I see all these other features. This is what you're gonna do. This is what right. you, these are the features, like this is what you're giving. This could be under the products, revenue streams as well, mm -hmm. or this can also be under the key activities. Right. Yeah. So I would put this under the key activities okay. and the key resources is actually on the next slide. Wonderful. Um, okay. That's fine, we got yeah. it, keep going. Yeah, so and, um, as you can see, a lot of this is based off of AI and very high tech technology that, okay, I'm gonna be honest, the last time I coded something, ever it just didn't work out so here's like the biggest like obstacle for me i need someone that can help me create this app to begin with and help me work with this artificial intelligence um because a lot of this work is just work that i don't have experience with and so that's going to be my key res resources i need people who understand how the industry works i need people who understand how to code ai and um that's that's like a really big chunk of it <laughs> and i need to find these people and that's going to go into key resources um, we have some exam. Okay, these are just sketches that I drew for the competition, but this is what we want like our app to look like in general. Um, yeah, there's that. And the yeah, slides are also. Let me ask you a question. If yes. you had done the model canvas before you started this presentation, or now that you know of the business model canvas, how could that have helped you uh, in this uh, putting this whole presentation together? Would it have helped you? Or I not? think it would be more concise. Okay, all right. Yeah, it would be a lot more concise because this one is kind of dragged out. Yeah, like this is what I always find a lot of the entrepreneurs and their business plans because they're passionate about what they're talking about. They just, a uh, lot of things that come in are not as important to investors. Investors could mm -hmm. be your customers or people who are going to fund you or who are going to evaluate you. And if you get the concept of these nine uh, you know, channels, the columns very clear and you articulate the value prop around those, it makes the discussion in nine slides pretty much you're done, right? Everything right. can be in the nine slides. Um, so that's the takeaway, guys, for this whole thing. But firstly, I love it the fact that you did this extempore. You just got into it, and clearly you're passionate about the concept. You know it all already very well. So good job, honey. This is very good. I like it. Okay, uh, Trisha, do you have something to show, Bacha, or do you uh, at this point where are you? I know you were. Oh, uh, so uh, I have a little bit with your plans, but go ahead. Yeah, of course. So I finished the template. Um, I can okay. present it to you guys right now. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Let's... I'm very proud of all of you guys. This is so good. I'm, it makes me so happy to see that, you know, 
the students have taken this to heart, which is fantastic. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, please do. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna just be uh, giving my idea. It's called seasonal gift boxes. Um, I think the name which I want to give is salt and pepper. So um, yeah. <laughs> It's random, but yeah, so here's a precursor to what I'm going to talk about. So the idea team, the idea theme here is just the joy of receiving. Um, ideally, I really want this target audience um, to be around like the Gen Z's, um, so they're around 15 to 24. Um, the problem here is what I'm trying to solve is just like the struggles with finding a proper gift and it can be expensive sometimes. So um, right now, what I want to solve is just having enjoyable products that are affordable to the consumers and their holiday type of themed or personalized. Um, so the skills I would need is Instagram marketing and buying. And I think I can train up quickly with reaching out and marketing. Um, so I really want to grade this through engagement and demand of my product. Okay, so- I love is... it, honey. Just the way you are so articulated in those seven points. Beautiful, mm -hmm. good job. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay, so uh, as I reiterated a long time back, or or a couple seconds back. <laughs> um, uh, so the consumer segments are gonna be Gen Z's. Um, the reason why I wanna do this is because like, they're more prone to things that I really love um, that I really wanna include here is like plushies and snacks. So I feel like Gen Z's would be an ideal demographic here. Um, so the whole idea here is just to celebrate the holidays and um, give pride in it. Um, so also like if they wanna treat themselves with what they wanna do with this uh, box, then this is what it is for. And um, so uh, my consumer relationships um, is gonna be through social media, uh, specifically Instagram. Um, I'm hoping that I get to like show photos of what the boxes will include. Um, and my channels, it can also be through Etsy as well. Um, I think both, I'm kind of like in a way debating which one should go, which one should be like a better medium, but that's where I'm going. Um, so my value proposition is that these are instant handpicked personalized or holiday themed products. These are obviously going to be cruelty free and um, it's just to enjoy their day. Um, also it's specialized personalized service catered to their own needs and it's affordable pricing. I think that's a key factor, affordable pricing. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay, so the key activities is we're going to provide an assortment of various aesthetic products that can correspond to the season and their interest as uh, plushies and snacks. Um, also, I want to build a closely knit community of in, of fellow box enthusiasts and I guess like um, give top tier products. And as well, like um, I want to make sure these boxes are designed to appeal to customers, um, to appeal to the Gen Z's. So uh, yeah, uh, the key resources, uh, I mean, key partners, um, I kind of want to fill you with um, retail stores and schools so I can advertise my product um, so people can know what it is. And uh, I think an example here could be like T4U where I can um, be sending posters of um, my product, salt and pepper. Um, okay, so key resources, um, definitely we need photos so we can um, bring in um, customers. Uh, we also need funding uh, initially because um, generally I'm kind of like hesitant about this, but like the products are gonna be expensive and we, I think it's better to have like money from, <laughs> it's better to have, I guess like a stored amount of money in a way. So if anyone is gonna donate to us, that'd be great. Uh, and then we want marketing, we want a marketing team and content. Um, also like, as I said, Etsy and Instagram, so we can promote the company and products from other stores, um, Walmart to Amazon, which we can include in the box. So the cost structure would be around assortment products, which are assorted products, which are, I mean, they're not gonna be cheap, but the quality is gonna be great. Boxes, um, I wanna make sure there's, there's design with the utmost value and those may be a bit expensive. And if possible, the website, um, I'm not sure uh, because like, I think I'm gonna be using Instagram or Etsy. So if there's gonna be a website, you may need a little, you, need, you may need to use a bit of money there. So yeah, <laughs> you need a subscription. And yeah, and my revenue streams are gonna be through funding, maybe donations, I'm not sure, and sales of boxes. Uh, so yeah, here are just some photos, some inspiration I got. Yeah. Um, one of the businesses is called Seal Box, um, which I got this inspiration from, where basically like they sell like a uh, Korean type of products to consumers all over the world. So I thought that was really cool, so yeah.
So let me ask you one question, uh, Trisha, on this, uh, and to stay on that last slide, the last one that you had, the number four, slide number four. Uh, what was your inspiration? Like, was it the fact that when you've gotten a gift or this aha moment of building this as a business, typically entrepreneurs have a pathos, like ethos, pathos, logos, right? Mm -hmm. So the pathos around the passion, why they do has something to do with their past or some experience. Do you have a story? And I would ask each for all of you four entrepreneurs to give me a story about, you know, if you have something right about your past, yeah. why doing what you would do, you're doing now matters uh, to you. How does this complete you? Like, for example, like if I were to look at this gift, I'm like, heck, nobody gives me too many gifts. I mean, people do, but I'm just trying to make an emotional story saying, you know, mm -hmm. when I do get a gift, it makes me feel valued. When I get a gift, which makes me, which is catered to my, my style of my personality, I feel valued as a consumer by my friends who bother to think about what I like and, you know, yada, 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 something like that. So do you have a story about, you know, why you chose this business? Yeah, so uh, I think I chose this business is because like um, I kind of like getting gifts. <laughs> I really like the joy once you get like a new gift. Like it's just like new products and like it's something that you can use forever. So that's probably why I wanted to make this business because these are like a ton of products which you can use for the long term, and it makes me pretty happy to see that people can get to enjoy these and. Um, it's just more personalized to their own interest. And I mean, it's also like, it can be through like um, holidays too, which okay. I guess like brings like much joy because um, like you get to celebrate it and you get to feel the holiday type of uh, appreciation towards it. it. So okay. no, that's clear. That's it. I'm just looking for the final story from each of all four of your entrepreneurs to say you know like why why did why did you choose this like if there is a story of your life which connects to this um just looking for that because one thing that entrepreneurs have going for them and which good entrepreneurs do is they connect the passion they connect the personal story to their product and that becomes a very important selling point so swasti tejas akshara any of you you know if you want to even talk about how doing this or like, you know, doing this activity or whatever you're selling has impacted you or the lack of it that it did not, it, because like, if you remember when I started Success Coach with all of you, I said, I do this for myself because at 17, I did not get coached. And I felt I could have retired like 10 years earlier in my life with the affluence I wanted if I had somebody coaching me earlier. And hence the reason I said do Success Coach is to give people, and I always tell people about my story about me and my dad. Right? We didn't have a very good relationship saying, for me, this is healing, this whole process of teaching. And, and that connects with people. Some are like, oh, it's TMI. But for me, it's, it's very personal. So does any of you have a story around, you know, Tejas, Swasti, or Akshara, or even Trisha that you want to share about? And I'm just putting you on the spot, like one, one minute each, if you guys want to talk. If you don't, that's fine too. But if you have a story, please tell me, like how it impacted you doing this project or... Not, not the model canvas, but the business you're proposing. Uh, I can go. Yeah. Um, I can just try something. But uh, for a really long time, I struggled with productivity. It felt weird, like, wanting to do something, just not having the motivation to do so. Every app that I tried just didn't work out for me. And I, I just started to wonder why. Because I had all these resources in separate places and I could use them simultaneously. But it just felt like none of these productivity apps was meant to fit my brain. And I felt like I could totally access my full potential if I just knew what it was or how to do it. And this whole idea just kind of branched out of that desire trying to find how can I access my full, the full capacity of my brain, I guess. And that's the short version, I guess. Yeah. I would, um, it's a great start. What I would do is I would add something about uh, something like, you know, in ninth grade, um, I missed a particular homework assignment and I let a team down of my 
assuming I'm not taking your story, I'm just saying, uh, you know, there was something due which people were counting on me on or uh, something that led to some kind of a situation. And I had to come to reality that, you know, honestly, I do procrastinate or I forget a lot of things and my productivity could be a lot better. And uh, as I started putting my productivity down on a piece of paper, just putting to-do notes, I saw this one particular change, which changed a huge amount. And then I figured, why not take this concept to a next level and make it available to the masses, right? That's a more uh, interesting, it's, uh, it, it's, it connects to the emotion. It connects to your personal uh, finding, uh, epiphany you had when you did something or did not. Um, so, but good start. Think about it, Swasti. We can, you know, don't have to come back to it now, but uh, that would be what I would try to close it out with, okay? Uh, Trisha, uh, Akshara, or Tejas, any of you, do, or do you want to, uh, Trisha, I guess, already went, but Akshara and Tejas, do you have any story to just tell us a story why or what this project made you do? Like, you know, no, I don't really have a story. Okay, well, one can always fake a story, uh, you know, fake it until you make it kind of thing. And, uh, uh, but again, uh, that was the goal. But Akshara, do you have a story? Um, not really, but um, I guess like it also like you could like make friends easy, almost like I don't know, maybe never mind. It's probably like I know like before like when other parents come and then they talk about art and stuff and you couldn't show their art and then. Never mind. That's probably really bad. Story. I like where you're going. I mean, you're again. You're just you're you're basically you're still selling the value proposition of what you are selling, which is okay um, as a benefit. Uh, what I was looking was really around again. Storytelling usually is a very hard concept. Most people, particularly when they're put on a spot in front of a few people, have a hard time explaining it. But uh, the the why we do something. Uh, there's a guy by the name Simon Senek. I'll send you guys a small YouTube video of his example, how he explains this concept. But the idea being like for Aksha, for you, it will be like, you know, I was a shy, uh, you know, seventh grader, eighth grader, and I didn't, I couldn't figure out what I can do with my time. And I was, I figured at one point I could just start drawing. And this teacher of mine who I worked with, uh, not only showed me how I could use uh, pastel colors a certain way, but she showed me the joy of coloring the sun or to making it of different colors, which got me thinking about, a new way of uh, you know expressing myself and as a result of that i did the following so now i'm offering this so that students can learn something similar and miss out, and not miss out on that joy in their life which i potentially could have or i did not get and i could have done better if i had something like this okay so that is all i'm looking for that uh, you know ethos or that that passionate side of your storytelling okay <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right, guys. Great. Thank you so much. Congratulations. The, the course is over. Everybody you did a phenomenal job. I salute you all for doing this. This is hard work and uh, I stay indebted forever to each of you for helping me uh, finish my own personal vision around this uh, product. So thank you. Okay. Thanks that, for the course. is really fun and I enjoyed it and learned a lot. Yeah. Oh, so thank you for doing it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that, Teja. That made my day. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this course too. It helped refresh some of my memory for small uh, projects. You know, Swasti, I love the fact that you brought your own uh, project, which I know you've been pretty shy to talk about. Last time when I tried to scoop it out of you, you didn't want to even talk about it. And this time, just without me even talking about it, you brought up your productivity app. So that was phenomenal. So thank you so much. <laughs> Anything from either of you guys, uh, Trisha and Akshara, before we close? Yeah, thank, thank you so much. You so much. Uh, this, uh, this course has taught me a lot of things about um, business, and I think I'll definitely apply it in the future. So thank you a lot. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Take care. God bless. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.